So in my most recent video, I told you guys not to worry that I will be back to explain everything about art NFTs. So here we are diving into this brand new world that even I don't fully understand, but I think it's necessary to understand. So a lot of you guys come here to reference, I'm not gonna let you down. We have to talk about it. We've all heard someone mention NFTs. Maybe it was at Thanksgiving dinner, but we've all heard it. And I'm sure at this point, we all know the metaverse is developing very fast. The world is changing. And I can't pretend with you guys any longer that the art world isn't gonna start developing with it. So here it is, Art NFTs Explained. What's going on, y'all? I'm Mariah Elise. Welcome if you're new. Welcome back if you've been rocking with me. On this channel, we talk about the many spectrums of the art world from my perspective. That's the art market, artist dives, the artists I personally work with, and of course, briefing you all on art news. On this video, we are diving deep into understanding the world of art NFT. This has caused so many arguments in my life and I think it's necessary to bring that here. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about it because the more I talk about it here, the more research we have to do and the better we will understand it. Oh yeah, guys, I meant to tell you the piece behind me is by artist Trey Slaughter. If you're interested in this piece or, or any work of his, go over to EliseArtGroup.com, click on available works, then Trey Slaughter, then check out all of his available works. Anyway, if you're here and you want to learn more information like this, go ahead and click that subscribe button and that like button and keep vibe with me. It also lets me and YouTube know that you're into these kind of videos, which makes me make more of them and tells YouTube to share it with more people. All right, now let's start with NFTs, an acronym for non-fungible token. This term is taking over the bridge of art world technology and finance and it's merging itself into the very clear future of the metaverse and even though many people are finding the most scammy ways to use this technology once we clear the smoke it could be amazing to simplify what a non-fungible token is let's first start with what fungibility is an asset is considered fungible when its units are interchangeable simply put a one dollar bill has fungibility because if i replace it with another one dollar bill i don't lose any value because one dollar equals one dollar Non-fungibility is a complete opposite of being able to be substituted for something of equal value of utility. Non-fungibility means it is non-interchangeable, incompatible, unsubstitutable in value. Now that's very much so like an art piece. For example, if I own a Beeple artwork and it's valued at $20,000, which we all know is way more than that. And my buddy comes over and he's like, hey, I'll trade my Joe Blow for your Beeple. It's the same size, it has the same color palette, let's trade. It was made in the same year and everything, but no one has ever heard of Joe Blow. He has no way of proving the value of this art piece. And I know for certain Joe Blow's work is not worth $20,000. I also know that he can't sell his work for $20,000. That's non-fungibility. Trading the Beeple for the Joe Blow is not equal in value just because they have similar qualities like color palette. The Beeple is unique just as the Joe Blow is unique. They are not the same. They do not automatically hold the same value. This is one reason why art could work perfectly within the NFT space. One piece of art doesn't necessarily hold the same value of another piece of work just because they share some of the same quality. Now here's something else that is super important for you guys to know. Even though the artwork exists digitally and many people play with the idea that it, because it is digital, you can just screenshot or screen record and now you have ownership of the screenshot or the screen record is the same as owning the digital asset. It's not. Even if you take the screen record and put it inside a digital frame and you live with it inside of your home, you do not own the digital asset at all. It is almost purposeless to download the JPEG without owning the token. The JPEG, the screen record, or the screenshot holds absolutely no value. Let me go further. If you were to take a high quality photo of a Beeple artwork and take it into a frame, do you actually own the Beeple? No, just like if you were to take a picture of the Mona Lisa and you were to print it out as a poster and you put it on your wall, you don't actually own a Mona Lisa. You own a picture of the Mona Lisa. You don't have the value in your possession 
of the Mona Lisa. In addition, the blockchain where the NFTs exist makes sure there is no way that you can actually steal the ownership of the works because there are so many public records that can't be tampered with. It can't be counterfeit because it's so complex. Another important takeaway here, along with no one actually being able to own or counterfeit, with crypto or digital art, you know who the owner is because of the public ledger, which if you guys know anything about art, this could be not a great thing. You might not actually want a public ledger because that's going to decentralize the art market when the art market is one of the only markets left that is not regulated. Now in this space, we know who the owner is. And every time the NFT sells, because of the smart contracts, because of the Ethereum network, because of the blockchain, every time it's sold, the artist receives a royalty unlike the secondary market within the traditional market that we all know and study about. So there are caveats here, right? Within the NFT digital space in comparison to the traditional market. Now, do I believe other problems such as a saturated world of flipping occurs? Yes, absolutely. Do I agree with it? Absolutely no. You know I don't agree with that. I agree with the integral collector, but the reality is that this world is a bridge of artists, collectors, and traders. And that's, and that's extremely newly navigational. I also know that the idea of regulating or having a public ledger or democratizing could present a problem. Now, doesn't that create the same elitism that we're consistently trying to avoid? Don't I know that Board Ape Yacht Club is not based around art. It's simply based around community, but so is the art world. The art world is 100% based around community. And I truly believe once the art world begins to merge into this world, into this NFT world, into the metaverse, into understanding how to collaborate those things together and how to begin to exist in this world are using this technology that is brand new that will emerge into our lifetime. Do I think elitism will be a thing? Absolutely, I do. I don't think you can get away from it. I think that if you get in early right now, maybe you'll be a part of that group. Does that sound horrible? Is that bad? Do we need to dismantle that? Absolutely, but is it reality? Yes, it is. We can't ignore that in this space, community is one of the biggest incentives of being a part of this world. It's easily a revolutionary time for the art world and the artists because in the shift of world crypto, in internet millionaires, there's less traditional here. And that's translating to the non-traditional artists being the beneficiaries of this revolution. Do I think digital art or crypto art is here to stay? Yes. Skeptical to say this? I don't know if it'll end up being right, but I do. Do I think it's a bubble? Yeah, I do. But do I think it will continue to be a valuable portion of the art community? Yeah. We can't ignore where the world is going. We can't ignore where the big name galleries and art fairs, we can't ignore that they will one day have real estate in the metaverse. The world is changing and they have to change with it. There will be so much room to experiment and create within this new type of world as a collector and as an artist and as an art enthusiast. So do I think it's imperative as artists, collectors, galleries, institutions, learn, understand and grow with this? Yeah, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the future. Yo, but before we get any deeper, if you are an artist or a collector, I want you guys to use what I use. And I use personally for my business all the way around Artwork Archive. But like I keep telling you guys, I use it in real life, like every day. If you go to my website, click on Available Works, it's going to bring you right to Artwork Archive because at least our group, we use it to keep our inventory organized and it's a game changer for me. It's a game changer for us. But it's not only good for someone like me, who is an artist manager, it's good for collectors, someone who also manages artists, advisors, art dealers. It's good all the way around. Artwork Archive keeps me organized, allowing me to have the most important information on demand. I'm able to track my inventory, my contacts, galleries, sales, my collection in general, and honestly, so much more. There are three separate plans, one for artists, one for collectors, and one for organizations. I genuinely live by it, and I really urge you guys to at least check it out. Now, I struck a deal with them that allows all of my subscribers to get 20% off because I love it so much. But before you fully commit, you can give it a try for 30 days. The link is in my bio. Now, moving forward, although these are not NFTs, I'm working with artists like Tay Butler, Trey Slaughter, of course, Lamont French, on creating a digital art collection. The ones that I'm about to mention, they're not NFTs, but I want you guys to pay attention to these. Now, although these are not NFTs, at least our group is working with Tay Butler and Trey Slaughter and creating an NFT art collection for you guys to start 
collecting digital artwork through us. But beyond that, even though these are not NFTs, there are three pieces that I want you guys to check out. Now, after you guys see these three art pieces, if you want to learn more about the artist, go to EliseArtGroup.com, click on Available Artworks, click on an artist you're more interested in, and you'll be able to see all of their available pieces from there and it's going to take you to artwork archive like i've been telling you guys which is funny because i really use the program i'm not it's, it's an affiliate but it's I, we really use it here so anyway guys here are the three pieces here's true religion the story of joseph by lamar french i also want to note that this piece is framed we also have the four long star power of liberty by trey slaughter third but not least we have fitted by tay Bella, which is also framed guys also also if you're an art writer and you have any interest writing about any of these artists go ahead and contact us at info at eliseartgroup.com. Now that we have had a pretty solid intro of NFTs, I wanna let you know that it's gonna take a lot for you guys to learn about this and it's gonna take a lot for me to continue to learn about it. I wanna continue to explore this conversation, but it's gonna take you guys going out and learning other things by yourselves. Really, really, really dig into YouTube and find out all of the right information. I tried to really fit this into, you know, a 10 minute video. I don't like having extremely long videos. There there will be so much more to come. I'm extremely interested in learning more and more, and I don't want any of us to get left behind. I usually bridge art and business here, and I'm excited to begin this NFT playlist as I continue this bridge with NFT and its technology. Now it's time for a little art news, art news with Mariah. I grabbed this from Artnet, and I knew you guys needed to hear it because we're talking about NFTs. I've also linked the article in the bio. Cryptocurrency billionaire Justin Sun just bought more than $100 million worth of art this year that he's going to display play in the metaverse do you hear what i'm saying he bought a hundred million dollars worth of art this year that he's going to display in the metaverse he says in quote as our aim is to build the finest and most diverse contemporary art collection we are interested in a variety of artworks and categories such as video music installation and ai art which we don't have yet Sun said, most of the artworks we own are static and we are eager to diversify our collection to enrich our museum in the metaverse. Art for everyone to see and participate in this very interesting conversation to spark creativity. Now, Arnett wrote, many of these works purchased through Sun's Ape NFT Foundation are being digitally assimilated to go on view at the Ape NFT Virtual Museum on Crypto Voxels in the Metaverse, a virtual world powered by Ethereum blockchain. Those with the appropriate technology, Oculus Quest, Oculus Rift, and HTC Vive will be able to explore them up close. It's crazy news. It's exactly what I'm talking about. These collectors and these museums and these galleries and these institutions using the technology that is being birthed, that is being born right now to allow you to not only look at videos on your screen, your computer, your phone screen, but to actually step into their space, into their world and feel like you're there using this technology, using whatever you have to step into this metaverse and actually be there and explore it face forward that is huge and if you think that these museums and these galleries and that this ecosystem are not going to grow with the actual world it's insane because they have to now some say that the traditional art world is extremely opaque buying art world only for the privilege just like blockchain democratizes finance they want to democratize the art market by registering blue chip art as NFTs on the blockchain and, facilit and facilitating a creator community. There are so many people pouring into the NFT community. We're going to try our best to keep up. Now guys, that's huge news. Do what you want with it, <laughs> but it's huge. And guys, thanks for coming for our very first short news segment where I will continue to give you guys short bits and pieces of what I think you should know what's going on in the art world. Let me know in the comments if you're into it. Now, if this video gave you what it was supposed to give, subscribe and like this video. Perhaps you'll think this is all BS. Perhaps you're with me and you think it's going to evolve. Whatever you think the job is to be involved and understand is progression. I have nothing else to say here. I'm out. Those vocabulary words, guys, I'm going to put them below. What I want you to know, that's words like Ethereum, blockchain, um, stake, proof of stake, stake of work, I think. Uh, I'll put them down and I want you guys to go define them. Dig, dig, dig deep into what the blockchain is and what Ethereum is and what NFTs 
are because we're going to keep talking about it here all right guys thank you i'm out